and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk about zoning, which is a, a little bit of a complex topic that I don't understand. And so our guest today is going to explain it to me, and I hope you'll learn something as well. Jeff Conkel from the Planning and Zoning Division, welcome. Thank you for having me, Robin. I know that you know a lot about zoning, and, and what I want to know is, it, why do we have it? Sure. Um, well, zoning began decades ago, around the 1920s, cities started to enact laws that would basically separate types of uses from one another. So you used to have things like factories that would appear right next to someone's house, and that created some undesirable situations. So, okay. so in the early 1900s, cities starting, started to enact laws to change that. Um, it's been a controversial issue since then, but it was upheld by the Supreme Court as something that cities can do. It's a constitutional use of our power. So um, most cities began to enact zoning ordinances, um, and Hampton did so um, in the 1950s, I believe. Um, but we're working from a zoning ordinance now that was from 1960, um, after the time that Hampton merged with Elizabeth City County. Well, I was going to say that would have really changed the complexion of Hampton from being a small downtown that was was probably um, mostly business. I don't know what it was at that time. I know it, at one point, you know, it had been a very prominent waterfront, a lot of business and industry, and then all of a sudden you gain all this county land that is largely undeveloped. Um, sure. with some residential nodes. So, so it's, it's partly kind of consumer protection to ensure that the vacant land next to my house doesn't end up being something that my neighbors and I don't find compatible. That's correct. So um, you kind of have some assurance when you buy a property that you know what the property is zoned next to you and what could possibly be built there or what uses could go there. And so some of that then is on the, on the buyer also to actually look at and see what the zoning is sure, around Sure, yeah. Them. You should always be interested in what the zoning is around a property that you're interested in purchasing just so you know what could happen there in the future. And certainly sometimes things change. Um, roads that are not major corridors become major corridors. Correct, and um, rezonings are also possible where the zoning on the property may change. Um, the Hampton City Council has to authorize changes to the zoning, but it does happen from time to time. Um, though there is what the planning division uses called a, a land use guide, um, kind of envisions the land use for parts of the city over the next 10, 20, 30 years. So, now, now, that's a guide that I bet most citizens don't know even exists. Like, even if you're aware that we have the comprehensive plan, the land use guide, that sounds pretty technical. Yeah, the land use is actually part of the comprehensive plan, um, and it shows a map of the city and kind of the, the type of uses for land that's envisioned in the future. So you could check the zoning of property around your property to know what could be done today, and you could also look at the land use plan to see if any changes are proposed in the future. And certainly that would have, um, some of the areas in Northampton that were developed most recently probably were agriculture or vacant land that eventually became rezoned. Yeah, that's correct. Um, a lot of times a developer who wants to build a subdivision has an idea of the type of houses he wants to build, how big the lots will be, and if that doesn't match the zoning that's on the site, um, he can ask the city council to rezone it um, to allow that development to happen. So what are the major types of zoning? Residential, obviously, even I can figure that one out. Commercial? Yeah, um, I guess in our job, we kind of break it into maybe four broad categories. You have residential zones, you have multifamily zones, so oh, apartment okay. type of uses, um, commercial, industrial or manufacturing zones, and then we have a fifth one that are kind of special zones, um, which includes things like special zoning districts that cover downtown, um, the Coliseum Central neighborhood has a special zone. Um, so kind the, of our master plan areas maybe, or places where? Yeah, places that may need some special attention to the uses that could be allowed there, or that you're correct, may be furthering the goals of a master plan. Okay, but even within, let's talk about residential for a second. There's R13, R, there's different numbers that apparently mean something that is way over my head. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not that difficult once you understand that the number, the R13, 11, 9, generally relates to um, the square footage of the lots that could be built in that district. Really? So, 
Um, it's not a... There's a logic to that. There is. It's, so um, R11 is generally something like an 11,000 square foot lot. It's not exact, but Which, that tell gives me, you an I idea. Mean, ballpark, because I, I, I can't visualize Most that. Most of Hampton's um, newer suburban neighborhoods would be an R13 or an R11 lot. Um, so sort of the Michaels Woods or... Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. And we also have some smaller ones like R9 and R8. You find those more in the older neighborhoods closer to downtown Hampton. So old Hampton or with, with maybe sure Phoebus. Okay, okay. Well, that makes sense. And so then, when when something changes in that area, when you know, like there's a lot of redevelopment along mm -hmm. Kickatan, um, and there's some effort to keep the zoning to match the character of the older neighborhood, not to plop down. Um, is that done through zoning? Are there other ways that's done? Yeah, it was first identified through the master plan that we should have appropriate infill housing in the Wyth neighborhood. So um, actually several months ago, parcels along Kikatan Road that used to be commercially zoned or some other residential zone that was not appropriate for the neighborhood, um, those were rezoned to actually our R4 district, um, which is a smaller lot size that's more compatible with the 1920s and 30s neighborhood there. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually build a smaller house on a smaller lot that fits the character of the neighborhood. So zoning means if, if I am a, um, a property owner, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily get to do anything I want with my property. Now some people would say that's not fair. Correct. Um, there are rules about what you can do with your property. Um, as I mentioned, some people don't don't like the idea that the, the city government could tell you what you can and can't do with your property. Um, but again, it goes to protecting not only your rights, but those of the rights of those around you, um, some assurance that you have compatible land uses. Um, it, so we call um, kind of the what you get to do with your property, you have like a bundle of rights. Um, you have a base zoning district, so maybe you're zoned R11, um, and with the R11, there are standards of how you can develop or use your property. So the zoning ordinance spells all that out for you. So you would know that I'm allowed to have a single family home on my R11 lot, and it has to be this size of a house, and it has to have this amount of setback. Um, people probably hear that term a lot and right, may what, not, so yeah, yeah. Um, so a setback is a distance from your property lines that has to remain open. So you can so only- it's all four of the property lines, all four, assuming it's a yep, square lot. You have okay. front, rear, and side setbacks, and then you build um, beyond those setbacks. So you leave space around your home um, so we don't have the house right on the property line. Right, okay. Um, now, you talked about ways um, that there were different kinds of ways uh, a city, any city, can regulate um, things. And it isn't just zoning, it's use permits and all kinds of things. Right. Um, cities can choose to allow uses or development in several different ways. Hampton um, has a, a five different ways that you can allow a use to happen on, on your property. Um, and they're all spelled out in the zoning ordinance. Um, the most common, <coughs> excuse me, is a by right use. Um, you may hear that term too, and really that just means that you don't need any special approval to do what you'd like to do. Um, there's no planning commission or city council involved in that approval. Um, so a lot of, like my example, a single family house in an R11 is a by right use. It's just something that's permitted. Right, it burns down, you rebuild it, you don't need a special zoning because you're sure. gonna do roughly what, what's already. And of course there are standards to follow, but the use itself of a house is allowed there. And now this is an interesting thing because this comes up sometimes when, um, for example, when neighbors are opposed to a zoning change, um, and I was thinking of two uh, recent examples, but, but the choice that the Planning Commission and the City Council makes is, well, maybe you don't like, and I think of it maybe when the Wawa was coming up and there was a lot of discussion, well, you might not want this, but all these other uses are by right. So anyone could come and put these other things on, not need a rezoning, and, and you as a neighborhood might find those things more objectionable. So yeah, there's yeah. a real push and pull here in terms of accommodating um, what, what nearby property owners want. Yes, um, uh, that's a good example because a lot of times we will see a rezoning request in front of Planning Commission and City Council, and that 
that developer or applicant is asking to do something that may be controversial to a neighborhood, but you also have to realize that if it's already zoned for commercial activity, you could easily have something like a, a car wash or a gas station or a, a whole list of uses that are just allowed by right. Mm -hmm. Whereas through the rezoning process, you may not like the use that's being proposed, but you're kind of being guaranteed what will happen there. So it's, it's a trade-off, but um, that's what the public hearings are for, to kind of hear what the, the neighborhood has to say and what they think about it. OK, so by right, it's already zoned that way. You're going to do something compatible. You don't need any special permissions. Right. Um, the, the next, I guess, uh, easiest one is a zoning administrator permit. Um, which is you don't need any special approval again from Planning Commission or City Council, but you do need a special permit from the zoning staff. Um, so you would come to our offices and ask for permission to do um, one of these couple of uses that require a zoning administrator And what permit. would those be? Um, there are only a few. Example. One would be a, a category called outdoor dining one. So if you have a small restaurant and you want to use some outdoor seating area, um, there are limitations on what you can do, but if you agree to those limits, you can go ahead and be issued a zoning administrator permit, and that allows you to operate your outdoor seating area. And that, that's kind of geared to having small businesses not go through huge levels of, if it's not going to have a big impact on the, Correct. On the surrounding area. Yeah, um, so outdoor dining one is an easier approval than our other category, which would be outdoor dining two, and that one requires a use permit from city council okay. because it's geared toward larger businesses or those that have longer hours of operation, so there may be issues with noise or traffic, those kinds of things. Okay. All right, so there's kind of a staff level permit, and then, then what? So then we have use permits are the most common of the ones that require Planning Commission and City Council's approval. Um, so you'll probably see those on the monthly agendas for those boards. Pretty uh, frequent. Like mm -hmm. I, I think the most recent one was a, a tattoo parlor where it was allowed to be there, but the use permit sort of put conditions on how it would operate. Correct. Is that, is yes. that a fair? The zoning ordinance says what uses generally are okay in that district, but require additional review by Planning Commission, City Council, in order to impose any conditions that may help mitigate any of the negative um, aspects aspects of the business. And so live entertainment maybe I think is one yes. of those too where you set hours or mm -hmm. how far the sound can travel or, or other kinds of things. Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, so live entertainment's common. The tattoo parlor we see from time to time. Um, I believe the, the funeral home use um, requires one that we saw recently. So there's a, a whole list of them that require use permits. Okay. What else? Um, there's a, a fairly rare one called a planning commission action. Um, most residents would never have to deal with that. Typically, utility companies who want to locate things like a, a sewage pumping station oh, or an right. electrical substation, those things just require planning commission's agreement that they're being located in an appropriate area. Um, those don't require city council approval. Um, so we don't see those very often, maybe once a year, if at all. Um, and then our uh, final one is called a special exception. Um, our Board of Zoning Appeals actually grants approval for those. Um, and the most common that we um, see fairly often is for a daycare. Um, there are different levels of daycare, just like I mentioned, there's outdoor dining one or two. We have daycare one, two, and three. Daycare one is a buy right use. Daycare two is a special exception. Okay, okay. So daycare one might be up to X number of children. Correct. Or? That's up to five children, and you're operating it out of your home as a home business. And so that is allowed. Yes. In in all residential areas, or most, or something like Correct, that. Correct. All okay. residential areas. All right. um, it's a good topic because we actually deal with daycare requests quite frequently. Um, I, I've seen a lot of those. <laughs> yes, right. yes, okay. and a lot of residents call with interest in how to operate or open a daycare. So. Um, up to five, five children can be by right. Up to nine children is the special exception from the Board of Zoning Appeals. And then a daycare three for 10 or more children is a use permit, like I just mentioned, for other types of uses. So, so part of this then is to also say, in a residential area, there's some regulation of home business and because that could draw traffic, that could have noise implications. I right. mean, 
Um, we do get calls a lot for, can I operate a home business? Um, there are actually nine conditions spelled out right in the zoning ordinance that tell you um, what you need to be able to comply with in order to operate your business. Um, so in most cases, you don't need special permission to do your business, but you'll want to check and make sure that you can comply with those conditions, which do talk about not creating too much traffic or noise or other issues with being in a residential area. So really, a lot of zoning sounds complicated, and, and it is complicated. When you look at those regulations, they're, they're long, they're wordy, they're legal. Um, but it really tends to try to spell out protections mm -hmm. for the homeowners or the businesses or, or the property owners around you to ensure that their value of their property doesn't go down and that the city develops in a way that has kind of compatible uses. Yeah, I think if, if there's a, a key word or phrase to take away from zoning, it's to ensure compatible land use. And, and that's really what it's all about. So if you're a home, your your neighbor's your neighbor property owner is a home. If you're a business, you know, they tend to try to locate those along, you know, along Mercury, along some of the other right. major roads. Right. Okay, so if people have questions, Jeff, yes. this is uh, entered things in their mind, they, they want more information, where's a good place to go? Um, well, you can always go to our website, which links to the zoning ordinance if you feel like you <laughs> want to take on reading <laughs> part of the zoning ordinance. If you're having trouble sleeping <laughs> at night and you want to check through the zoning ordinance. Yeah, so um, that's always located at hampton.gov slash planning, that's the planning and zonings page. Um, but they can also certainly call us at the Development Services Center. Um, we're at 728-2444. Someone's always there during business hours to answer the phone and transfer you to a zoning official to answer some questions. And I would say, too, very general questions. The 311 folks are great Absolutely. at knowing the things that come up frequently and, and who to direct the calls yes, to Yes, we get well. a lot of calls transferred from 311, so you're also easily able to pick up the phone and call 311 and ask to speak to a zoning official. Okay. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for coming by. This helps me a lot to understand why we have zoning and, and what those numbers mean, which I had no idea. There was a very rational explanation for that. And I hope you've learned a little bit more as well. Thank you for watching.